This is a model rocket flight computer. And in this video, I'll go over the various parts that it contains, as well as several of its functionalities. Let's jump in. This is the Polaris FC-102, the second model to the prior FC-101. I have a goal to make model rocketry fun for people who want to both learn about the concepts of flight design and for those who have no clue where to start, but just love rockets. So I'm going to make the full schematics and the code open sourced, which will soon be available on my website. It's important to note that model rocketry is a slightly perilous hobby. So always make sure you know what you are doing before you execute to ensure your safety and the safety of others. The Polaris series of flight computers has a single purpose in mind, to safely recover the model rocket. So if you want data collection for various reasons, that is only available for the 200 series of flight computers and above. Let's talk about the parts and components. Let's start with the microcontroller. It is the well-known Atmega 328P, which contains 32 kilobytes of ISB flash memory. It also has two kilobytes of SRAM, 23 general purpose IO lines, 32 general purpose working registers. The Atmega 328P operates from 1.8 to 5.5 volts. The single I2C line allows the chip to receive raw data from multiple components on board through the I2C protocol. The processing of this chip is more than sufficient for its purpose at 20 MHz. However, for future boards with TVC capabilities, a higher processing power is recommended to quickly run complex algorithms. This chip was also selected because of its famous use in Arduinos, so if people do build or buy this, will already be familiar with the chip. It is fully able to run on the Arduino IDE, as well as giving freedom for custom codes. A base code will be already given so that the computer functions right out the box. An external battery can be screwed down through the terminal blocks. The terminal has a diode protecting the circuit from inverse polarity, in case that happens. The battery itself can be anything that can have a large current draw for the pyro channels, as well as at least 5 volts and above to power the system. Speaking of deployment, the board also features a potentiometer, which functions through analog data to add a timer after reaching Apogee. Setting the pot value to zero seconds essentially tells the computer that it will deploy right after Apogee. This is useful in case it's predicted that the launch day will have a high wind speed. You wouldn't want your rocket to deploy at Apogee and glide a few kilometers away from sight as you can have a chance to lose it. Indication is vital, especially during testing and launch day to see what part of the code is being executed and to see the current state of the rocket at any given time. A loud piezo buzzer is placed so that you can hear the startup and different states of the rocket while being at a safe distance from it. I recommend turning it off during troubleshooting as you don't want to wake up your fam. A bright RGB LED is the main eye catcher of the entire system to show the different states visually such as startup, launch detect, eject, and idle mode. Standard SCK, RX, and TX serial lines and an on LED will be seen as indicated by the bright green LEDs. An IMU LED is also shown on the bottom right to indicate power to the inertial measurement unit and barometer. Pyro detection LEDs indicated by P1 and P2 show if the terminal have been engaged for ejection. Finally, a slide switch to regulate power in the entire board is also available dead center. A THT silicon push button is ideal for dust and water resistance. This button is for quick resets to restart the loop program of the board. On the back, you can see the 5 volt voltage regulator of the board and the FTDI chip. There are three main diodes located on the front part of the board. The first, as mentioned previously, is for polarity protection in case you flip your batteries. You don't want to burn the regulator and other major components. So this allows to remove the diode that has been burnt and replace it with a new one. The two other are for the pyro channel. Two MOSFETs, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, 
are located next to each terminal block. A quick theory on MOSFETs. When a 5V signal is applied to its gate, the MOSFET essentially becomes a controllable switch. This can happen because every MOSFET has a certain voltage gate to source threshold, where when surpassed, charges can flow from the drain to source. Now every MOSFET is different, so it's important to check this value on the datasheet of the MOSFET in question. I'll be making a second video on the program and how everything works inside the chip, as well as perhaps some demonstrations of this going in a rocket and being fully tested very soon in the future. As for sensors, we are using the MPU 6050 for the inertial measurement unit. I'm not using anything fancy as I only need standard orientation data and acceleration. For the barometer, I'm using the BMP280 which measures temperature and pressure. Both sensors send data through I2C protocol and signal will be processed for noise reduction. Both the accelerometer and barometer will have a cross-check program to see where and when the rocket will reach apathy and to initiate ejection. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below and thank you for watching.